that everything with everything that's happened in your life like do you have any remorse regrets remorse same thing I told the judge why would I have remorse it was a, a factor of the street world that you live you die you hustle or you go broke they was going to get killed anyway. It wasn't nothing personal. It was business. So I took them out. Y'all just mad because y'all didn't get a chance to sit and smell. Mm. I knocked out the middleman, which was you, and just said, man, eh, go to hell. Now, you're not involved with the situation. Well, you should have just told the police for what? So y'all could torture them, put them in jail and all this and that. Yeah, then, you know, money. that walk in front of you. No, my way is simple and easy. I'm his judge and jury. You yeah, save the fucking society money. Could just think how much money y'all would have to spend taking him to court and all this and that. And the man know. is mixed up into illegal activity, so he belongs to the street. He's fair game. I'm fair game. Somebody killed me? I hope nobody take uh, that personal. It was business. You live in that lifestyle. You live in that lifestyle... You know what time it is. There's no such thing as retirement. Tell me one person them that got that filthy rich and retired. No. Why? Because other people gonna want his power. In order to get his power, they gotta knock him off. Someone got to let it be known that they was the one that did it. If not, ain't nobody, nobody, ain't nobody gonna know it. Like, what the fuck knocked him off? Well, fuck it. Let's go take his shit. No, the man that knocked him off, you had to step up and uh, claim that shit. Claim that, hey, man, this is my shit. Boy, left it to me. Man, you and the boy was going at it. Then you should understand then, shouldn't you? I'm so Nate Boomcraft sits down for a series of in-depth interviews for a docu-series detailing his life. Boone was only nine years old when he began violently exerting his will in the neighborhood before being placed in the juvenile system. After a stint in the military as a part of an Army Ranger Special Forces unit, Boone became a hitman for hire for the notorious Detroit street gang known as the Best Friends. After the Best Friends murdered his younger brother, Boone, who was already on his way to prison for murder, decided to cooperate with authorities against the men who he felt were responsible. His plan was to attempt to kill them once they were all inside the prison system. Once inside, Boone continued wreaking carnage. Only his fuse were not only with the prison guards and his rivals, but also with notorious criminals from all over the country. Battered, bruised, and scarred, Boone still remains one of the last ones standing. So he decided to share. Dead man, dead man. We are at the home of a retired hitman, a small house in Detroit. I can't show you the outside because he doesn't want anyone knowing where he lives. He has multiple surveillance cameras that alert him to anyone coming his way. Most of y'all may know me as Nate Boonecraft, the Grim Reaper. I was hired to kill Washi Jr., better known as White Boy Rick. Kraft has admitted to killing over 30 people, some friends, some enemies, most Strangers. It was business. You have to understand. These people was into illegal things anyway. So I don't feel bad doing something that doing something to somebody that is in that lifestyle. In the in 1980s, lifestyle, if okay. you had the money and wanted someone uh, dead, no. he would do it. If somebody paid me to hit you. I won't hit you. So don't get it wrong. I believe in money. I'm sitting here working on the Nate Boone Craft dot. I feel like like more of a journalist, like at this point, like, you know, because I'm doing research. I initially got involved because they sent me a link in a group text. I watched the video and, you know, at the end of it, I was like, this ain't doing his shit. This ain't doing his story. No justice at all, you know. And I was going to strictly be behind the scenes and not necessarily, you know, um, be involved. We get to talking about um, 
certain situations and certain hits and corrupt politicians and corrupt police and killing state witnesses and all of this type of shit. It's my job to present the story as best I can with as many facts as possible. Some things we can speak on um, because of his immunity, some things we, we can't speak on um, either because it wasn't covered by immunity or as far as, um, you know, what his actual role was in the military, um, as a army ranger special force, you know, like a lot of that shit we can't talk about either. You know, I'm like, man, this is deep. I felt like, <laughs> I was like, man, I'm gonna need therapy after this. Shit. You want the very first one I did? Yeah. I was 10. Me and my boy. We both was 10. We took it to that nigga to see. <laughs> was it intentional? Did you go there with the intent or something just happened? No, I went there, and, no, I went there with the intent that he gonna die. I don't care what, what goes on. He already talked this big shit to me what he gonna do to us. So I said, man, get your gun because we're gonna kill this motherfucker. He said, serious? I said, yeah. So we took it to his ass. We took it to his ass. We did what he had to do. Then we went to the uh, the Cinderella show. Because we picked up the girls and we went around to the show. That's our alibi. <laughs> somebody didn't see us. Oh, we was at the show. Was it was it hard for you to do? It wasn't hard. It was easy to process the shit because that's part of the life. You got to be able to uh, step to a person and... If you step to him, basically you have to step to him with the thought of, I'm going to have to kill this nigga. Because if you don't, he's going to come back on you. But I decided, okay, let's, let's go a different route. Tough man contest. I joined that. Okay, that's another way to make quick, quick money. I uh, probably ain't going to do it forever, but hey, I could make this 5000 real quick by knocking these niggas out. But uh, I got in the ring the first two fights. It knocked them out in the first round. Third, third fight was fighting, fighting. Let me see, Butterbean, Butterball, whatever the hell y'all call them nowadays. And uh, hell, knocked him. Well, they call it TKO. It was a knockout, really, because the boy was out on his feet. He just didn't fall to the mat. That's when my nephew Bruiser he decided to tell his friends about me. When they came down there, I didn't know they was called best friends. They came, met me I, after I came out the locker room. Told me, man, you know how to throw them hands. I was like, I ain't know all I know how to throw. <laughs> when I first ever met Rick, him and his friend was on the verge of dying. We was at the fucking beeper store. We was there, and my boy was there to, uh, to get some phones and some more beepers. And his boy bumped into my boy. My boy said, hey, man, what the fuck you doing, boy? And this boy, you know, stepped back with his friend, told him, man, it ain't shit, it ain't shit. Of course, my boy said, I think that's, I think that's my spider man. Give a fuck who he is. Don't involve yourself in something that got shit to do with you, but that's your boy, okay. Say, well, this is my boy. But we got two more motherfuckers. This boy was that rolled up in there, you know. And uh, he said, hey, man, is she gonna talk to you? What do you mean by what? He didn't bump into me. He would have bumped into me. He'd have been part of that wall right there already. So, oh man, no, 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 my brother. Let me let me just talk to you outside. So we, I step outside, tell him stay in, keep eye on them. I step outside. We stepped over to his car. He said, "Man, did this, man. My name Mozzie Riley Red." Okay, well, what you want, a lollipop? Don't care about what your name is or anything else. He said, man, uh, I think I know something about you. Know something about who? He said, are those your cars out there? I said, damn, man, you getting off all into our Kool-Aid. I said, yeah. He said, y'all best friend. Yeah. I know uh, 
Rocky Reggie and all. Well, I know Reggie. I said, yeah, okay, we'll be little. Reggie ain't here. He said, you the one that they call the Grand Reaper. I see the hoodie hanging out the back of your coat. I said, so because I got a hoodie on? He said, man, you got the beard in the ass. I said, man, did you, what you want? Check this out, man. I'm willing to pay you if you be my bodyguard. Now, at that time, we just doing bodyguard work, really. We we moving a little way, but we're not no big way where where everybody know that we doing all this. But uh, I said, uh, how much you talking? I keep five hundred dollars to give it here. <laughs> I was people about robbing his ass when he pulled that knot out. I should rob his ass, beat the shit. I took his shit. <laughs> I said, no, fuck it. Maserati, Demetrius, uh, boom. The best friends, seven of them. Over eight years, I guarantee you, 140 people died at 15 a year or 20. I would estimate, and ask Boone, because Boone could tell you this better than me, honestly. I can't really tell you. This is guesstimation. I would guess easily they killed 20 people a year. So this is how I say in Seven years, they killed 140 people. We already know, like, when it came to to the kills, that y'all were dominant. But was it anybody else on that level, you know, doing what y'all were doing at that time, or was y'all just pretty much by yourself? Like, basically, just, just running, running wild. Basically, we was... uh. <laughs> Hit me as period. Okay. We sold a little bit of drug, but we were basically killing people because the money was good. But then we decided that, hey, these fools don't want to hire us no more. Hmm. But we ain't getting no money in. Best thing to do now is take these fool drugs and we sell it. So basically, that's when the word got out, best friend is knocking off the people that, uh, that hired them and taking their shit. They get in that territory. So we can knock off the people that they hired us to kill. Then we go back and knock the person off that hired us. So they had a little meeting off of Seven Mile over there about knocking off all best friends after that. What? He said, yeah, man, they had a meeting, man, you know. And the homeboy showed us the name of everybody that's supposed to have been at that meeting. I'm like, whoa. Didn't he used to be y'all boss? Said, yeah. Big James, all the niggas was there. <laughs> Demetrius, all the niggas was there holding up, talking about uh, knocking us off. Because we was knocking them off, the ones that we supposed to be cool with. There ain't no coolness. If you got something we want, we gonna come take it. Demetrius Holloway and Maserati Ray, Ray, those two was partners. Together. But uh, Demetrius went to prison, and Maserati Ray was supposed to keep it going. But he involved us. Demetrius didn't like that. So when he came home, he was telling Rick, man, you need to get rid of them goddamn friends, man. Them motherfuckers ain't no good, man, blah, blah, blah. Of course, Rick telling us. So now Demetrius done opened a can of worms. So we all mad at Demetrius now. Oh, you going to back talk us? We thought we was all right, you know, when you came home, but now you back talking to telling Maserati Rick that he shouldn't be fucking with us because he don't want nothing to do with it and he ain't gonna fuck with us like that. Said, ain't no problem. Rick said, man, I don't want no, I don't want my name coming back on that on him because I ain't trying to go smoke. I said, you ain't got to worry about it. When we smoke that nigga, you ain't got to worry about it. Anything off limits to like a certain extent? Like, I know you don't, like, fuck with witnesses. Like, you'd rather do shit when ain't no witnesses around because that's just more time. And... Well, I never did anything with no witness around because I I would have to kill them. Yeah, that's something that's, that's just why any, 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 any killer I was involved with, nobody knew it. But they assumed, people assumed that, man, I think which card did, who, me? I ain't did nothing. Did, any, did anybody else have any limits like that? Because I know some of them motherfuckers didn't care. It really didn't. They go out there and just blast anybody that's around the food. Killing innocent people that ain't got nothing to do with this shit. That's when I stepped in and told them, man, we need to get up, to go out to the farm and let me show y'all how to do shit. Because y'all doing this shit, man, you're killing innocent people. 
You ain't doing them but drawing attention, making it hot. That make it just hot for the entire neighborhood because they're killing people ain't got shit to do with it. They talking about, uh, uh, they killed such and such, but they killed up five or six other motherfuckers that was there. They was kids with this and that. Now, kids was my worst. Uh-uh, off limit. Don't shoot nobody around a kid. It's easy to sit up in somebody's bushes or sit in a van somewhere where you just watching out the back window until the person come out their house or until they pull up. There's a lot of places to catch him. Just like we caught the nigga up on the, at the store. He was coming out the uh, party store. I think he owned it. I don't know. All the time he came out of there, and two of my friends ran over there to kill him. I usually don't like to be around people when they do that because then you just made me a witness against you because I didn't watch you two niggas go kill that guy. Even though the way y'all killed him, they were shooting each other. And if they wouldn't have had no vessels on, they would have been dead. Nigga in the middle, you doing sh boo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, Don't y'all know the bullets going through that jackass? You know what you mean? Look at your damn shirt. Man, what the fuck this shit? I said, right. It's loaded up enough to not go through your vest, but you got the vest on, and it's just peeing off your vest. What you thought, somebody throwing bricks at you? Rocks at you? You niggas was shooting each other. Nigga, put him there, and y'all go into an angle and get him. Y'all go and shit, hit him back and forth like a ping pong ball. 44, 45. Boom, 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 boom. Why'd that nigga jump around? Remember that, record? Jump around. Hey, jump around. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> was there any time where uh, a kid saved somebody? Wilshire. The guy was sitting on the porch. We was coming down the street. We know he's sitting on the porch. The kid came out and sat right next to him. Boo was like, fuck it, hit him. I said, man, there's a kid there, nigga. Well, you know how they, I don't want him seeing that shit? That fuck with his mind. He got mad at me, so we pulled him out over on fucking Gunston. And he's like, man, you could have hit the nigga, man. No. So he got out and walked back. Boom, boom. He comes back to him. It's done. I said, cool. You didn't hit the kid, did No. I said, okay, then. See, that's what I'm saying. Don't hit the kid. Was the kid dead? She said, no, the kid went back in the house by the time I got back around to the corner. I said, I'm surprised the nigga didn't see your big ass because of dead. Everybody know that we a big boy and motherfucker, you know, and uh. Because the only word that I could think about, I was like, man, like, they were destructive. They were fucking shit up. <sighs> were, you, were you planning to get out of the game or you just felt like it was going to take I was going to get out the game. When I got out of prison, that was the last of me, but uh, they killed my little brother, and that made me want to go after them. Of course, you go hear all types of shit about different people supposed to did this and that, the same way they saying that uh, Parker's supposed to went back up in the hospital and kept Maserati Reg, and I mean, people going on these uh, podcast or whatever talking about who who did what. Well, if they did it, why that nigga ain't in prison? Or why he, or why the police caught up with his ass? See, me, I took a lie detector test to prove everything I said was the truth. <clears throat> I didn't know that. Oh, I got the paper on it, too. I took it, man, but I'm going to show y'all that one day, too. The lie detector test that the police gave me. The DEA, I mean, I took so I took my two different lie detector tests to show that it's still the same. He's the man still telling the truth. But people told me, you a snitch. Oh, you can call me a snitch if you want to, but I understand one thing. If I kill your brother, you promise you ain't going to tell on me? You ain't going to try to get back at me? Even though they didn't know I knew that they was behind my brother killing. So, by the, I mean... Bruiser told me, he said, yeah, man, come up, I killed Andre, man. I was like, no, nah, man. He said, yeah, man, they paid that boy to uh, do it. That's the way when nobody see who really did it. I said, ain't no problem. Ain't no problem because I, I wouldn't put it past them that did it. But, of course, I'm in prison, so I got to wait till I get home and take my revenge, which I did. When I got home, I took it to him. Many people started dropping don't mean I did them all, but I did, I did quite a bit. 
That's when I had to tell the uh, DEA about all the things I did, and they gave me immunity. In other words, I give it up and get the truth. And I did. But people just keep on saying, well, nah, man, uh, Boone was saying this and Boone was saying that. Uh, well, I got court documents, lie detector tests, and other people that know what's what. I gave it up what I did. I could have gave up what a lot of other motherfuckers did. I could have gave up a lot of drug dealers and all that shit back then, but I didn't. That's why nobody went to prison that I gave up. I gave up them six, and them six gave up other motherfuckers. Whether they took the stand against the people or not, but some some of the informer was just informing, informing to the police, but they wouldn't take the stand on it. Me, I took the stand because I was hoping some of them motherfuckers get froggy and want to jump. You think I wouldn't have jumped over that motherfucker with this dance? So, and then, so you was just talking about the 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 snitch label and shit. Like, so in prison, did that? Well, they knew about me in prison because I've been in prison before, so most of the guys knew me. And they knew I was a stand-up guy because I've been in prison more than uh, three times. And I ain't never opened my fucking mouth. But this time, I'm going to prison for the rest of my life. So, yes, I'm getting them niggas up. Why? Because they have to come to the prison. <laughs> they come to the prison, they're going to see me again. The war ain't stopped yet. Just because we got locked up, no, the war's going on. And I already got my people already set up in there. John and Lyle, we couldn't wait for the motherfuckers to come through there. We was going to butcher the shit out of them. <laughs> At that point in time, homeboy came through the prison. I'm still in uh, quarantine, so he come through prison. I see him coming through. I'm like, whoa. Oh, shit. So I go tell my boy, hey, man. Oh boy, coming through here, man. He said, for real? I said, yeah. He said, what you want to do? Hmm. Let's open him up like a fish. So I'm sitting at the table eating. True enough, they classified him quick and got him down to the tunnel. When he came through that tunnel, I'm still sitting at the table eating. I'm like, damn. And the first thing he started asking the kitchen crew and the reporter, hey, man. Where's the guy named Ice Man at, man? They say that he's the man when you need to get something to happen, something happening. You know, I, I, I was here about putting it down in here. Mm, yeah, you better talk to the Ice Man about that. So they point him over to me. He comes over there. Hey, bro, what's up? Uh, my name is such and such. I'm associated with the best friend. You may have heard of him. I said, yeah, I heard of him. He said, man. I'm just glad I ran into you, man. I want to know if I can put it down. I said, man, when you part of a group that was did something to a guy named uh, 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 Andre Carson, right? He said, yeah, Carson. I said, yeah. Damn, that's a damn shame, man. He said, yeah, man. He cried like a little bitch. So he cried like a little bit, like you finna do. You know what? Huh? I said, like you finna do. That was my little, that was my little brother. No man, I know your full name, man. Yeah, anybody know my full name? Night, you came through the tunnel. Yeah, you let name crap, man. Craft. His Carson. So yeah, my mother got remarried. We got the same mama. He looking. He see the guard over there coming through the tunnel. He guard, guard. I turn and look. Car seen my face. He seen John and Lyle face. We smiled at him. The guard took off. He took off running. He says, "Hey, where you going? I'll see you later. <laughs> he took off. By the time he got back, that boy was butchered. Damn shame. Mm -mm -mm. They took me down there to the police station. Then they found out I didn't have nothing to do with it. I was just all draped in blood. I'm like, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Who, me? So you didn't see who did it? Yeah, I saw who did it. Who? John Lyle. 
You didn't order it. You didn't participate or anything. You just sat there. What am I going to do? Run? You're like, we're going to find out. But yeah, we got to send you back to the prison. Those two already gave a statement like you did, that you had nothing to do with it, that they did it because a guy come in there talking tough shit. I said, yeah, he came in talking tough shit about how he can take over and do this and that. And uh, the prison one number bitches and Whew, you don't call me as that doing all day, bitches. Were any of y'all like really, really, like really friends, like really dogs? Or y'all was just getting money together and, you know, really didn't give a fuck about each other? It was both. You had some that was cool with each other and that would stick by each other. But of course, if the shit hit the fan, they would cross each other out. Like, or like which car start crossing my heaven? His man that was right, by his right left hand man knock off other people in the group. Yeah, I, they finally figured that out. Said, well, man, why are we killing our own men? Uh, uh, I could have told him that. Uh, he don't want anybody to live that knew about what he did back then. So he was knocking everybody off. Then once he had y'all knock everybody off, then he was going to knock y'all off. That was his plan. Hmm. That's why I told him. Y'all should have came and told me we would have did that nigga then. But you didn't. That's the thing I know. Y'all doing me. Raid our houses. And we know who you are. We grew up in the same goddamn area. Or we knew you because you was on our payroll. But then you want to cross us because homeboy is telling you that he going to give you $5,000. Go raid his shit. They came undercover. They wasn't even supposed to have been raiding nobody's shit. But they raided the spot. But we knew that they was coming. And when they came... They ran up in the house, but we was already in the house next door. We seen them park down on the corner, so we all went into the other house and watched them as they pulled up, jumped out, ran in, up in the house that we supposed to have our shit at, but we had moved everything because we knew they was coming. The other cops told us, watch them motherfuckers, man, because they going to try to raid you. So we wind up going over there, and the motherfucker... Uh, Ran up in the house. When they ran up in it, we ran outside and stood there. When they came back out the house, they seen all those out there with AKs and them 16. Yeah, bitch. Brrrr. People printed it or some bullshit. The, the police was uh, gunned down, making a raid. How do they make a raid if y'all don't know about it? It was only three of them, and they called themselves Raid. None. Bitch, you raid my goddamn place, stealing my shit to give it to somebody 